Happy Monday! Happy Monday, guys. We hope you had a great weekend, but buckle up because this week is a wild ride. It sure is. Let's start with sports. Winter and spring sports are in full swing with track on the road today and lacrosse having their first home game of the season tomorrow at 4 p.m. If you have ever wondered what it's like to plant a church, there is an incredible opportunity for you. Dr. Hammond is leading a church lab this semester for all majors where you can learn what it's like to build a church from the ground up. Check it out every Thursday at 2 p.m. in the Stuby First Floor Conference Room. There are tons of spaces to be creative on campus. A few of those you will find in the library where there's a makerspace lab with craft equipment and 3D printing, as well as VR lanes for you to try. And also the multimedia lab, which is where we are filming this video. And there's filming equipment and podcast equipment for you to use. Just reserve a time. It's awesome. We have one more thing to share this morning. Tomorrow night is Ballet, ballet Magnificat at 7 p.m. here in Newton Hobson. That's right, it's a ballet on campus. This group has been on our campus multiple times over the years, but this year they will be performing Deliver Us, which is from the Prince of Egypt movie soundtrack. <laughs> so, if you like ballets, come on! It will be free for students with your school ID. And if you are a student who doesn't know how you feel about ballets, come anyway, and it will still be free with your ID. There are so many incredible opportunities to be involved across campus, but for now, let's jump into the service. So come on, stand and worship with us. Good morning, everybody. Whether you're here as a student or you're here for a day, we're all glad that you could be here this morning. Join with me as we praise and give thanks to our God. I'm a spirit.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a privilege we have to serve a God who loves us so much that he called us out of the darkness of this world and into the glory of his presence. In 1 Peter 2, we are told that you are not like the other nations of this world, for you are a chosen people, God's royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he has called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Let's pray. God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for loving us so deeply that you sent your one and only son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can get to know you, Lord, so that we can have an encounter with you here on this earth, Lord. I thank you, God, for loving us so much, God, that, that you just continue to show your mercy, God. I pray that as we continue to worship and praise you, Lord, that you help us to have an encounter with you just through this entire service. We worship you, God, and we just thank you for everything that you are and all that you continue to do within our lives. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship together.
together in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. And the evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord
just pray that we would long for more of your presence, God, and for more of your spirit, God, just to be closer with you. I pray that we would never take these moments for granted, Lord Jesus, and that we would just sit in these moments, God, and sit with you in these moments. I thank you for how you've just moved through this space, God, and how you're going to move and continue to move through this campus, Lord Jesus. I just pray that your spirit would continue to fall fresh on us, Lord Jesus, and I just pray that we would just soak it up, God, and sit in it. I thank you for who you are and how good you are to us, Lord Jesus. I just pray for Cameron as he's going to bring your word, Lord. I just pray that they'd be your words through him and that he would be a vessel, God, and that we would just hear his heart and hear your heart. Thank you for who you are and what you've done. In your name we pray, amen. You guys may be seated. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Oh, you guys are so excited to be here. Happy Monday, everybody. Well, I have something for you guys to be excited about. Cameron Spear is here to speak today. Yeah. But Okay, bef there we go. We can be excited about that. Be before we get to that, we have some really awesome people with us today. I want to welcome the Preview Day students. Hello. Welcome to our community. Welcome to chapel. Yeah, we can give them a hand, too. Uh, my name is Michaela Wickham. I'm the director and coordinator of worship and spiritual formation here at SWU. So I want to personally thank you guys for coming and being a part of our community today. We are so glad to have you. This is our chapel space. We meet here Monday and Wednesdays at 10 and have an experience just like this. It's a place for us to come, to worship together, to hear a message, be encouraged, and be challenged as we go out into the world, into our classes, and wherever we go from here. So we're excited for you guys to be here. We'll see you around uh, throughout our time today. Well, uh, yes, we know Cameron is here. Cameron, if you don't know who he is, he's an alumni of SWU. As of last year, he was one of our religion students. He's currently a youth pastor for middle school students at Cypress Church in Ohio. So he flew in last night, got in late. He's going to hang out with us today. He's going to be around the area all week, so you get to see Cameron, hang out with him. But we are so glad for him to be here. So can we give Cameron another round of applause as he comes and shares the word with us? Wow. Wait, let me just get this, this, this set up. Y'all could have just clapped for like seven more seconds while I get this set up. Wait, there we go, perfect. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is a joy, a privilege, an honor, and a pleasure to be back home to SWU. I am so glad and grateful just for this opportunity that God has given me to speak, uh, speak to you guys this morning. As you know, if you've heard, my name is Cameron. I was a student here eons ago, such a long time. <laughs> oh no, but I graduated in 2022. I had the awesome privilege of being in your seat. Preview students, wherever you are, where are you? If you're there, wave your hand. There you go, right there. I was in your seat not too long ago. And so God has taken me on a wonderful, wonderful journey. And I am so excited, full circle, just to come back and to share very briefly this morning. Well, like I always say, I won't be before you long, so let's go ahead and dive into the Word. As we continue this series of, of courage and faithfulness, I believe that there's a message of encouragement and hope from the Lord. And so, as we begin today, we're going to look at Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And so, if you want to turn your Bibles, your phones, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land that I have given you. From the Negev wilderness to the south of the Lebanon mountains in the north, 
from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all of the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with, Mo I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land that I swore to their ancestors that I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all of the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. And finally, he says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. And so for the brief moments I have before you this morning, I just want to talk from this simple topic, be strong and courageous. So look to the person next to you, tell them friend. Oh, wow. I didn't get any talk. I, I like a good talk back church. We got, you got to participate. Come on. Look to the person next to you. Go friend. I don't know what you're going through, but today you can be strong and courageous. There we go. I like a good talk back to me church. There we go. <laughs> so I can remember not too long ago, I can, I can remember being there in that seat with you where you are preview students. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was in the middle, I was in that same seat and I was nearing the end of my time at Tri-County Tech and I felt God nudge ministry on my heart and I didn't really know what that looked like but I found myself here at Southern Wesleyan University. I sat right there in that seat and I, as I walked out of one season and nearing the horizon into another season, I was... I, was, I didn't know the journey that God was going to take me in three and a half years. Little did I know how, how my life would change and how my life would be impacted by the love and faithfulness of Jesus and the love of friends, this strong, swoo community, and the ministry opportunities on and off campus, and especially the staff that cares more about you, more, more as a person and not just as a student. I loved my time here at SWU. If you ask me, I, I absolutely love it. I love this community. I love the people. But listen, in all honesty, it was not always peaches and cream and, and, and sunshine and rainbows and, and frolicking through, through the, the, what is that, the quad. It, it wasn't all good times. Like there were some challenges. There's some, there's some hills and there's some, some battles I had to fight. And so listen, college, well, from high school to college, it's a rough transition. It takes discipline. It takes hard work, it takes study time, it takes time management, it takes focus, spoiler alert, none of those things come naturally if you're Cameron Spear. <laughs> so, but nevertheless, I made it through God's grace, God's mercy, the prayers of family and friends and this amazing suit community in 2022, marched right across this platform and graduated. And so, it can be done. And so, wherever you are, wherever you are, if you are here today and you have those nervous feelings about not knowing what's next, or maybe you're about to not knowing what you're about to step into, as we dive into today's scripture, my prayer is that you will leave encouraged and you will be able to have the strength and the boldness to walk into all that God has for you in this season and every season. And so for context today, as we look at the book of Joshua, this book describes the Israelites' conquest of Canaan. And so just like in most military histories, the, the focus is on the commander. But in this war, God himself is the commander. And so this book shows victories of, of time after time where God stepped in, God intervened, and, and God gave his people the victory. And so the, uh, God made a promise in this book to Abraham. And so this book tells of God keeping his promises and God being faithful to fulfill them. And so here, as we open in chapter one, we see that it opens up with the death of of Moses. And there's a need to replace his leadership. And so this privilege and this challenge has been given over to Joshua, who has been Moses' assistant for 40 years. And so now the time has come for Joshua to be the leader. And so God has a vision for Israel. So God's chosen people, it, God, it, 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 establishes, it consists of establishing Joshua as leader, giving him promises, and then giving him the means to accomplish those promises. So let's pause for a second. Can you imagine 
if you're Joshua, you're Joshua, you've been Moses' assistant for 40 years, and now the time has come for him to transition, to go be with Jesus, and so now all of a sudden you, you are the one who was appointed, you are the one who was anointed and chosen to lead God's people into the land that God has given them. God's speaking directly to you. So what are you feeling in this moment? Are you afraid? Are you anxious? Are you nervous? Are you nervously excited? Do you doubt yourself? There's no way God can use me. There's no way I can, I can do these things that God's calling me to do. There's, there's simply no way. There's, there's no way God can use me. Are you, are you doubting? Do you ask God questions like, God, are you sure? <laughs> like me? Like, you want me to lead these people? Like me? Do you struggle to find words at all? And so sometimes in our lives, we're faced with those Joshua-type moments, right? Sometimes God is calling us to do an extraordinary work. We may not have to lead armies or, or tear down or conquer kings and kingdoms, but God will often call us, his people, to do some extraordinary things for his glory and for our good. And even if we don't know all of the details, even if we don't know how it's going to all work out, we can trust the heart and the character of God because he is faithful. And so you're Joshua. God is calling, he's charging, he's championing you into what he has planned for you. But it's not just for you, but it's for God's chosen people. The task may seem impossible. The task may seem scary and unconquerable, but in spite of all of the challenges, the circumstances, and the changes, you, Joshua, can be courageous. And as a matter of fact, you can be strong and courageous. And so we see today in this text, God is speaking to Joshua, and he's, he's telling him what's about to go down. And he gives him some instructions. He gives him some inspiration about what he wants Joshua to do. And so God is, this, this chapter in Joshua, it's, it's, heart, it's heartwarming. It's tender. And it assures God, Joshua of God's care, his presence, his protection, and he urges him to obey everything that is written in the law of God. And it's a model of how we can truly understand and we can see how God is graciously he encourages his servants, and this is still true for us today. I can think back at SLU. There are so many times where I was running, ripping, and running. I was on chapel band. I was an RA. I was doing so many things, and I needed some encouragement. So sometimes that encouragement can come from the, your roommate. Sometimes it can come from a staff member. Sometimes it can come from a professor. But God is a God who encourages his people when he wants him, them to do an extraordinary work. And so God had a vision of how he wanted to use Joshua. Right? He wanted to use him to do great things in the lives of his chosen people. But here's the key. Joshua's success in this, in this time depended more on his spiritual state and his obedience to God more than anything else. It depended more on his obedience to God and his spiritual state more than anything else. And this is so true for us as well. True success in this life cannot occur apart from knowing and doing the will of God. And so we're going to look at today, and God begins to speak to Joshua, and there's some principles that you and I can learn, and there's some things that we can apply in our lives as well. So we see three times in this passage of Scripture, God is encouraging Joshua to be strong and courageous. There's found in verses 6, verse 7, and then verse 9. So let's look at the first one. And the first time is found in verse 6, and here we see God's provision. We see God's provision. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land that I swore to their ancestors that I would give them. And so for Joshua, for Joshua God wanted to use him to bring out the Israelites into the land that God had promised. And so when Moses died, God's vision still needed to be accomplished. So he raised up Joshua as a leader to lead this people and so he provided the land for the people, but he provided Joshua also for the people. And so this reminds us that whatever God calls you to do, it doesn't just affect you, right? Whenever God calls us to do a great work, it doesn't just affect you, but it also affects the people around you. And so God calls you and I, God calls us to serve him by serving others. And your assignment from God is so much bigger than just you. He wants to use you, he wants to use you to make a kingdom difference and a kingdom impact on those 
around you. If you are a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, God has a purpose for your life. You are not here by accident. You are not here for no reason. God is intentional, and God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He has a kingdom assignment for you. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to go and be a pastor or jump into ministry. For some of you, maybe that is what it means, but it all, for all of us, it means that God wants to use you to further his kingdom, to make disciples, and to present and share the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who need to hear it. So this is God's vision for you, each and every one of you, and this is God's vision for me. And so accomplishing this vision requires us to be strong and courageous. I would like to say it like this. Would we be a people who are on mission for God's vision? On mission for God's vision. To be strong and courageous, it comes with the understanding that God has called you to do something big. Joshua leading God's people is no small task. But the good news is that he did not have to do it by himself. God would give him provision, and God would give him everything that he needed in order to lead the people. So we have God's provision. The second thing we see is God's promises. We have God's promises. This is found in verse 7. He says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all of the instructions that Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left, and then you will be successful in everything you do. Verse eight says, study this book of instruction continually, meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in everything you do. This time, God is telling Joshua that he, in order to be strong and courageous, and he talks about the importance of obeying the instructions found in his word. And so in Joshua's time, he had the five books, the Genesis, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But we are privileged to have the whole entire Bible, the whole word of God. And so only those who study and obey God's word would succeed in God's mission. And so that word meditate there in in verse verse number eight, it says, it means so much more than just contemplation, right? It means more than, than just thinking about it, but it means reflecting upon God's word in a thoughtful way and applying its truth to our lives. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or, or stand around with sinners or join with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditate on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither, or they, and they prosper in everything that they do. And Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. And so meditating on God's promises is essential. We can't do what God said if we don't know what God said. And so don't neglect spending time with God through through reading the scripture, like in private personal Bible study and then personal Bible study and Bible study in the community of other people. Meditating on the promises of God is essential because it's in God's word that we see the promises of God. Guys, God has been God for a long time. He has never changed. He never will change. He's never broken a promise, and he never will. If he promised to never leave you, he won't. If he promised to never forsake you, he won't. If he promised to never fail you, he won't. If he promised to never change, he won't. But on the flip side, if he promised you that he'll be with you, he'll do it. If he promised to always protect you, he'll do it. If he promised to always love you with an everlasting love, he'll do it. If he promised to save you, he'll do it. If he promised to forgive you of your sins, he'll do it. If he promised to give up his son for our redemption, he'll do it. If he promised that he would die on a cross for your sins and mine, he'll do it. If he promised to rise from the dead three days later, he'll do it. If he promised to give us a home in glory and an eternity with him, he will do it. But until then, if he promised to be with us as long as we go along this life following after Jesus and making other disciples, he will do it because God is a God who is faithful to keep his promises. And so we have God's provision. We have God's promises. And finally, this is my favorite, we have God's presence. We have God's presence. 
Look at verse 9. He says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because the Lord your God is with you, with you wherever you go. And so God wasn't sending Joshua out by himself. God promised Joshua that in the same way he was with Moses, he would be with him. He commands and encourages Joshua to be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged because God would be with him. And so God says, I'm with you. In the same way he was with Moses, he's also with us. God says, I am with you. God's presence is essential. In the same way, God never sends us, just like God never sends Joshua, God never sends us into unknown territory by ourselves. And even if it may feel or seem like we're alone, we're never alone because God is always with us. God goes before us, and God is with us. And so to tell the story, I have a little little quick story. So as Michaela mentioned, I... I now live in Ohio, which is very vastly different than growing up in the warmth of South Carolina for 23 and a half years. So uh, up there, the weather is very, like, you can have four seasons in less than 24 hours, zero exaggeration. So one day, it snowed, uh, and it was like eight degrees, and I was it, there was, it was muddy and icy and cold and bitter, not really great conditions. <laughs> So one time I was driving on the road and I was like, this is, this is kind of dangerous. This is not fun. And so I'm driving on this icy, icy road, but I saw something and there were tire tracks in the road. And so I was like, huh, this road is icy. This road is treacherous, but as long as I can keep my car in the tire tracks that have already gone before me, I think I know I'll be all right. And so in the same way, God goes before us. That doesn't mean we won't have to go through rough times. It doesn't mean we won't have to go through some some dangerous roads. It doesn't mean God said to be strong and courageous. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. So Joshua may have had some reasons to to be afraid or discouraged, but it doesn't matter because God was with him. So in the same way, God goes before us. It doesn't mean we won't have to go through the challenges or go through the bumps in the road, but it does mean that God in his omnipotence, in his omnipresence, and in his omniscience, he goes before us and he gives us protection, but he's also right there with us as we're going through. That's the God that we serve. This is our God, and he gives us the strength and the courage and the encouragement to be strong and courageous because God goes before us and he's always with us. So maybe you're sitting here and you're like, okay, that's cool. That's great. But like, what does this mean to me? Like, how can I live this out? What, 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 is, what does this mean for us today in 2024? And so again, if you are in Christ, God has saved you to serve him. God has created you with a purpose and he has good works for you to do. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's masterpiece and he's created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. And so just like for Joshua, the Lord has an assignment for you and for I, for me to do. And so sometimes being strong and courageous may look like stepping into this wonderful, amazing community and seeing all that God has for you. Sometimes being strong and courageous may look like starting a Bible study with the people in your apartment or the people in your dorm or, or, or wherever you find yourself. Sometimes being strong and courageous looks like going on a missions trip. And sometimes being strong and courageous means being an RA or, or being a lifeguard or walking alongside the people in this community. This is one of my favorite ones. Sometimes being strong and courageous means being packed in a van in the heat of summer for eight long weeks doing ministry at camp in the heat of summer. <laughs> Shout out to summer ministry teams. It was a great time. <laughs> Sometimes being strong and courageous means just sharing the good news with someone. We can be strong and courageous because Jesus is with us. And so in the New Testament, he promised us again, before he ascended into heaven in Matthew 28, he said, Jesus came and he told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all of the commands that I have given you, and be sure 
of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so no matter what season you may find yourself in, just like Joshua, we can always be strong and courageous. We have God's provision. We have God's promises. And most importantly, we have God's presence. And so wherever you find yourself today, be encouraged and walk into all of the things that God has for you because he's with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He loves you so much. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much that you are with us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your consistence. Thank you for your faithfulness. And God, thank you that you, you gave Joshua this encouragement to be strong and courageous because you were with him. And God, in the same way you were with Joshua, in the same way with you were with Moses, God, would you be with us? As we walk out your purposes and your plans for our lives, God, would you just have every moment. And Lord, as we live fully every day surrendered to you, we just we surrender our lives to you. We surrender our, our future, the unknown. We can trust you because you're faithful. And so I pray for each and every student here, every future student. God, we just pray that you would just make the pathway plain. We just pray that you would give us your provision, your presence, your protection, your promises. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your love. Will you be with us the rest of this day and the rest of this semester? We give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. For it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Preview people, stay where you're at. You're going to get some instruction. Go in God.